Hi, I'm Izzy, and this is Dizzy Quilts and Sews. In today's video, I have my sewing room tour. All right, well, I've been promising this video for a while now, so figured today's the day. I am not 100% done, and you'll see that in the video. There's still a few little things I need to work out or organize or find a better place for basically. But all in all, I would say I'm almost there. I'm very, very happy in my new sewing room. I've been using it for a few weeks now. And yes, I'm very pleased. I'm super pleased that I also have managed to keep it pretty tidy, which, um, which is always good. Now, before I walk you through the whole space, just to give you a little bit of background information as to why I decided I needed to redo my sewing room. I was also going to do a before and after, but the before, I put a video out last time, last year, this time, where I take you around my sewing room. So basically that's the before, and I'm going to link to that video down in the description box if you want to have a look at what it used to look like. So last Christmas, my hubby got me a Cricut machine for, or as a gift. And I put my Cricut machine in a corner of my sewing room and then started gathering supplies for it. And they also would go into a little corner of my sewing room. And then throughout the year since Christmas, the corner where my Cricut stuff was, also became the place where my new brother embroidery machine went to along with my embroidery thread anyways it became a massive pile of things in that corner and it made it so i was never tempted to use my cricket because it was just too much work to get it out of the pile i never used my embroidery machine because it was just too much stuff to move around so that I can get to it. So over the summer, I started talking to Marianne and say, you know, we really should reorganize the room so that I have access to all my machines and all my supplies are neatly organized so that it doesn't appear to be such a chore to just start, you know, applying some heat transfer vinyl on a t-shirt. <laughs> So during our trip to the UK, we started making plans. We actually drew out the room almost to scale and deciding where everything was going to go. So basically, the room didn't need to be bigger. It needed to be better organized with more workspace um, and, you know, more, more machines out. So easier access. That's the deal easier access to all of my machines. After we got back from the UK, I did quite a bit of research on the IKEA website, on YouTube, uh, looking at uh, sewing room organization videos. And yeah, I came to the conclusion that IKEA was where it's at, basically. And Marianne and I took a trip to IKEA and bought all the things. I put every piece of furniture together myself or with a little bit of help from hubby or Marianne, but for the most part, it was all me, so it wasn't that difficult. And I'm super, super happy and proud with how it turned out. So enjoy the tour and I'll see you back here at the end. All right, so I'm at the bottom of the stairs, right at the basically the beginning of the laundry room slash sewing room. So I'll give you a very quick overview and then go more into details. So the first thing I see here is a cedar chest that has a bunch of my quilts. That cedar chest used to belong to my mother-in-law. And then I've got my computer or a printing station and pressing station. I've got all of my machines back there, a new cutting table right here. That also is Calyx units and that holds all of my fabric. 
And then a craft station or Cricut station with my Cricut machine, my Cricut Easy Press, and some of my Cricut tools. So that is basically my room. All right, so let's start with this little area here. So this is basically where I keep my sewing books for now. I haven't decided whether or not that's gonna stay there permanently. I kind of don't like it like this. It looks very cluttered. I have those things here might go. I'm a huge hockey fan, so this is all collectibles from McDonald's, believe it or not, about 20 years ago. And then I have some bolt of quilting cotton that I keep there because it doesn't really fit anywhere else. And then I have my grandmother's cross stitch that she gave me a couple of years ago. She made that probably about 50 years ago. So I keep this in my sewing room and I've got hangers there because like I said, this is the laundry room as well. I'd love for those hangers to be somewhere else, but hey, I also have like lines up here where I can dry my clothes. So this is the, you know, I didn't know where else to put it area of the room it will most likely get reorganized at some point, but for now, I'm happy to leave it as is. Next up, we've got my computer desk and printer station. So that is basically a tabletop from Ikea and one Alex um, cabinet and a chair. Um, yeah, this is big enough for my printer my laptop, my iPad, and also my pressing mat and iron. So I get my pressing done here um, for the most part. So when I'm sewing, I like that my machine is right here so I can just swivel in my chair and then press whatever seam I just sewn. It's great for uh, pressing as I'm sewing. And this, by the way, is how I organize my printed patterns. So I do mostly indie patterns. So once I've printed them and cut them out, I fold them neatly and put, put them in a file folder like this. And I keep all of that stuff in another room. So there's another room that keeps or where all of the stuff that I don't use on a regular basis is stored. So like my big, huge roll of quilt batting, all of my patterns, some notions like ribbons, uh, zips. Uh, my quilting cotton is all in that other room as well. So I keep in this room only the stuff I use every single time I come down here, basically. Then I just have a very small cabinet where all of the Cricut vinyl gets stored. And I have my tripod on top of that. And the only reason why this little rolling cabinet is not next to the Cricut station is because my tripod is on top of it and this is the best light in the room. So I film in this corner of the room. I do have a full length mirror over there that I need to put up on the wall. Right now it's just kind of leaning against it. So I do need to put that up at some point. So next we have the table with all of my sewing machines. So this was there in my old room, but I only had room for two machines because the other end of the table over there was my cutting table. So now I have room for all of my machines. I have my Juki Serger over here. Then I have my DX7, another Juki. Then I have my TL2010, which is basically my quilting machine. I have a quilt on top of it that I need to get quilting. And then over there is my brother embroidery machine. I put that one at the end because it's not the one I use most often. But yeah, now room for all four of my machines and I absolutely love it. Love it. Up on the wall behind the machines are all of my threads. I still have room for more. So I place them in basically type of threads. So on the left-hand side, I've got all my orophils, 
or all of my cotton threads that I use for quilting. Then I have my polyester Gudeman thread that I use for garment making. And then I have a few uh, spools of Mariflex thread. So that's the like elastic thread. And then up above that, I've got my serger thread. So I don't have matching colors for everything. I tend to use something that kind of resembles the fabric color I'm sewing. Just to give you an example, I'm about to get started on t-shirts in like this royal blue type color. Well, I'm using navy thread just because I don't have that color of thread. Now, the only little thing that niggles at me with this setup is that all of my wires, all of my cords are basically behind the machines. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but there aren't very many electrical outlets in this room, so I kind of have to make do. Um, yeah, it's not a big deal, but whatever. What I do love is that previously, there was stuff under that table, like everywhere, and now it's all empty. So I can move freely in there when I'm sitting at one of the machines. I don't have a ton of things in my way. So yeah, I love that. Then up on this little shelf here, I have a bunch of little knickknacks and um, oil for my machine, some glue, some basting pins and so on. And then I have my little letter board here with my Dizzy Quilts and Sews sign, which I think is kind of cute. And then I have a pegboard from Ikea with all of my sewing essentials, basically. So I've got marking tools in here and in here, extra rotary blades. I've got my scissors and rotary cutters. I haven't figured out what to put in this big one yet. So for now, I've got my little chick from the Think Pink subscription, subscription box from a few months ago. And then I have my rulers back here. This little wooden holder, let me see if I can show you it better. It says, Mom, my daughter made me um, that in high school quite a few years ago. And I absolutely love it. And it's perfect to hold all of my rulers. So for now, it's staying there. If I find a better spot for it, I'll move it. But for now, it's all good here. And yeah, and then I have my beautiful pink lamp that my, my hubby found. If I remember correctly, he found this in the garbage, believe it or not. And it wasn't working. So he simply fixed it and put it down here. And I absolutely love that lamp. So there you go. All right, so now if we turn the corner, I have a little uh, trolley on wheels that I got at Michael's a few, couple years ago, maybe a year ago. And I keep essentials and non-essentials in there. Everything that's in the bottom uh, tray is not an essential as far as I need it every single time I come down here. But there was no other place for me to store those things, so I leave them in there like a lint roller, some scotch tape, some extra serger thread, and so on. And then all of the zipper pouches in here hold different notions. So one of them's got all of my paper cutting instruments. Um, one of them's got all of my sewing machine feet. Another one's got extra needles. So all of my extras, basically, I keep in those pouches. And then the top tray has basically stuff that I use most often. So some clips, my marking and small snips and kind of things that I like next to me. I've got some pins and I've got a tissue holder that Carol made for me. I know it's supposed to be in a car, but I love it so much. I have it right there. So I've got tissue handy, extra bobbins, a measuring gauge that kind of thing. And the bottle is, I refill it and use that for my iron. And then we've got the Cricut station, which is basically identical to my computer station. It's a tabletop from Ikea, some Alex drawers, and then the same chair. 
and another couple of pegboards from Ikea where we keep all of the Cricut tools. I have to say Marianne's been using this desk, so I keep calling it Marianne's desk because she's the one who uses the Cricut most often. But now that I have easy access to the machine and all of my tools, I might actually start using my Cricut machine a little bit more. All right, and finally, the star of this room and the thing that I love the most probably, well, maybe not. Maybe I love my machines more, but this table is pretty cool. So this is my cutting table. It's made up of two calyx units at each, so one at each end. I got the door inserts for the calyx and they have risers at the bottom. And on top of that is the exact same tabletop I used for both desks in the room. They're all the same size. And it is large enough to have my very big cutting mat. So this is a mat that is 24 inches by 36 inches. And then this one is 24 by 18. So I usually have them stuck together or butt up against one another. So I can cut a pair of pants easily on here. Um, it is amazing. And I love that I can walk around the entire table so I don't have to move fabric around. I don't have to reach when I'm cutting. This is amazing. Now on one end of the table, so in these four cubes, I've got my entire stash. So I really don't have a lot of fabric when I compare myself to other vloggers, but this is pretty much as much as I would want to have in my room at any one time. So I've got my wovens on top. I've got my knits at the bottom. They're not really organized in any kind of way because I don't need to organize them. Everything is on Stash Hub. I have a picture of everything and I know which cute, which um, little cubie it goes into. So yeah, I might refold everything to make room for a little bit more. But I'm serious, like I would not want my stash to be much bigger than this because I would, I think I would feel a little bit overwhelmed. So I'm quite happy with this. They're not super full, which is nice. And doors were necessary because, you know, you guys know I have a cat. And if the doors weren't closed, he would get into those and get cat hair all over my fabric. Now let's check out what's in the other Calyx unit. All right, in this one, I have what I would call like my specialty fabric and or tools. So on the right hand side, I've got my pressing tools. I've got my ham, I've got my clapper. I've got a travel iron in here as well. Then on the left side over here, I've got ribbing. I've got, this is um, a remnant of a cable knit. Um, I've got lining in here, that kind of thing. And then on the bottom right, I've got my embroidery thread and my stabilizer. And then on the left, I've got vinyl. I've got more lining. So basically just specialty-ish fabric and tools um, that I wanted handy, but I didn't want to put that fabric in with the rest of the stash. So that's how I've organized it. Now under the table, I have what used to be a bed for Bear, but he never slept in it. So now I have extra ti uh, tripods on top of it. I've got the laundry basket because, you know, this is a laundry room. So I needed room for the laundry basket. And then over here are two extension tables that go with my sewing machines. One of them is for my brother embroidery and the other one is for my Juki DX7. I will need to find a spot for those at some point, but for now, that's where they are and I'm fine with that. I did buy some 3M hooks to put on the side of the Calyx units where I'm gonna hang stuff like rulers. Now, the rulers I do have, I discovered that the hole to hang them is not big enough for this bigger hook. <laughs> so that was very disappointing, but I'll find something else to hang on here. I'm pretty sure. 
All right, so what do you think? Um, I would really, really love to know in the comments below if you have any thoughts or ideas around the things that I mentioned weren't completely done yet, um, or if you have any better ideas in terms of where things is, are stored or how I organized everything. I'm obviously not going to buy new furniture at this point. This is it. But I'm completely open to ideas and suggestions as far as how I store my supplies and all of the different material. One thing I did forget to say during the tour and at the beginning of this video, and some of you might wonder why on earth did I keep this thing? So the table where all of my machines sit has been in this basement for years and years and years. When our kids were teenagers, this was their computer desk. So we have six kids <laughs> uh, between the two of us. So I have two, he has three, we have one. So all of our teenagers used to line up their computers on that table and do their homework, play games, and that kind of thing. So this used to be the kids' computer room and laundry room. And there are some graffiti on this table that I just did not want to get rid of. For me, this is like the last remaining piece of when we had all of our kids at home. So that's why I didn't want to get rid of it and buy new desks. Just in case some of you wondered <laughs> why I kept it. All right, well, that's it again. Thoughts, ideas, suggestions down in the comments. I really hope you enjoyed the tour. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please don't forget to like the video on your way out if you liked it and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again and I will see you soon.